Dr. Fucking Strange. Normally the couch that I sit on allows less reverb, less echo when I film these videos, but today I was like, you know what? I just love this movie so much. I think I'm gonna stand for this review. This set normally is, ends right here when I have the couch. So up here there's nothing. So I put a green screen. A little Doctor Strange poster in the background for you. Ruining the illusion. <laughs> okay, wow, this film was something amazing. I really, really, really enjoyed this film. Normally when I do reviews, I have notes, I have like bullet points that I wanna cover before I start talking. I'm kinda just winging this one because there's so much in this film that I'm like, I'm just gonna talk about what I loved and then like the few critical analysis and negative things, I guess. So Doctor Strange review, time to do this. Holy shit. I love, love, loved watching this movie. Marvel, who are you? Who are you people? You guys are so imaginative and you keep defying studio expectations of things. Like, in terms of a studio film, like, this film is fucking trippy. This film is fucking weird. There's a lot of weird shit. It's called Doctor Strange and it's a very strange film at times. To basically sum up my experience of watching this film, when the movie was done, I didn't really have any complaints or negative critical analysis or whatever until I reflected on the film because during the film I was just so into it. I was just having such a good time and I was loving the crazy visual aspect because the crazy visuals are such an integral part to making this story work. And what I'll tell you is this, the trailers, they don't show you like 90% of the weird shit that goes on in this movie. I love that because you know, when you see the trailers, you're just thinking of shit like, oh, it kind of looks like Inception, kind of looks like The Matrix. It goes way into its own unique territory, way different, way more psychedelic and trippy. I love it. I love, love, loved it, especially watching on IMAX, one of the few, few films in 3D that I would say is absolutely worth watching in 3D. I got caught up in traffic on the way home, so I listened to like a shit ton of like critics. Just, I like to hear like the few people I tend to check out consistently are like the Schmoes, Jeremy Johns, uh, Chris Stuckman, Flick Pick, Black and Red Comedy, you know the big ones. So I tend to check those guys out. I believe it was Stuckman who I, I recall him saying how the film, the first act is feels a little bit clunky and it feels like it moves a little bit fast. And I agree from a, from an analysis point of view in terms of writing and tone and you know smoothing things out, editing, I can see that for sure. But what I will say is that that first act still features a lot of great moments and even a couple of really great moving scenes. You know, like I love the moment where we meet Doctor Strange. Like he's, he's doing surgery and he's bobbing his head to some 70s music and he knows like the year the songs came out. He's having a little like trivia debate about release dates on the song. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm supposed to be going back on the movie trivia showdown really soon. Got an email from Christian Harlock. Keep a lookout for when that comes out. Benedict Cumberbatch. Holy fuck, man. I don't know how this guy consistently just keeps showing how cool of a fucking actor this guy is. Every single role I've seen him in, he is awesome. Even if he doesn't even have much in a movie, he's still really cool. And yeah, there's like similarities to the Stephen Strange character that are kind of like people that we've seen before, like Tony Stark. A lot of people I know are drawing comparisons to him because Doctor Strange is someone who is very narcissistic, very sarcastic, emotionally closed off, egotistical, kind of demeaning to other people. <laughs> I saw this one with Andrew from the Movie Source channel, and when the movie was done, he'd want to see an Avengers of Infinity War, Rocket Raccoon, Star-Lord, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange all bantering with each other because, yeah, they're all sarcastic, egotistical, emotionally closed off assholes in a lot of ways that are also very lovable because they're fucking hilarious. And that is Doctor Strange. But Benedict Cumberbatch still makes it his own. I'm so used to hearing Benedict Cumberbatch's British voice that it was interesting like quickly adjusting to his American accent. And I think he has a really cool American accent. I think he sounds fucking sexy. What basically happens is Doctor Strange is a surgeon and he's like one of the best surgeons in the world. And then he gets in a terrible car accident that causes him to like lose a lot of the, he gets a lot of nerve damage in his hands. So he can use his hands, but he's constantly shaking, so he can't really do surgery with a guy who has like really fucked up hands. And it's driving him insane in the first act. And, there, and what I mean by how this film, that even though it kind of goes a little fast through it, there's a great scene where Doctor Strange is having this like breakdown in front of Rachel McAdams. He's taking out a lot of shit on her. And it felt like a real scene. It felt like this would be a real argument. And this felt like real like fucked up tactics a guy does to someone that he loves. 
Yo, cats, I'm filming. Why do you only make this kind of noise when I'm filming? I already got all this echo in here I gotta worry about. It was enough to make me get into the moment to be like, damn, I, I really do wanna see this guy go through all the magic stuff now because I, I feel for him. I feel really bad for this guy. When he does travel to India to start looking for, you know, Eastern kind of treatment. It was interesting, you know, this is a real fish out of water kind of tale. And things really do, like I completely agree with Stuck. You know? <laughs> so like, like uh, things really do begin to smooth out when he does meet the ancient one, when he meets Tilda. And I will say about Tilda Swinton too, like, I was one of those guys, as a half Filipino man, I am taking a stand for Asian American actors to be working more and getting better roles in Hollywood. Steven Young, Nightwing. I was one of those people who was like, man, that kinda sucks that they took the ancient one and made her a white lady. I gotta say though, Tilda Swinton still owns this role, and she's not someone where it felt like her having to be like an Asian kind of character, felt super necessary for this specific story because it, they established pretty early on that she's someone who has a very mysterious past and so she, I didn't feel like she had to be someone who's Asian when I was watching the film. And what I love what Tilda Swinton did was she really gave it a three-dimensional performance. This easily could have been someone who is, yes, like a, the spiritual, wise, philosophical teacher, but she was much more than that. There was, a, there was a complexity to her. There was complication to her that I felt she had this major depth the whole time. Like she wasn't scary, I mean she's kind of intimidating, but you love her and you trust her and then her scenes with her and Benedict Cumberbatch work so fucking well together. I gotta tell you like, when the like crazy trippy shit starts, like there's a cool prologue that happens where you see visuals that, uh, that you're like, yeah, I've seen some of that in the trailers and it's still awesome to see. But when it gets to like him really beginning to learn about this kind of stuff, it was very, very trippy, very weird. And watching on IMAX 3D was like, whoa, what the hell? But I loved it. I fucking love how much they committed to making it so fucking strange. Like on a personal note, I am one of those guys, like a few years ago, I was one of those guys who discovered the secrets by Rhonda Byrne, which also led into a lot more other forms of personal development, listening to a lot of philosophical speakers, personal development, motivational, Jim Rohn, Les Brown, reading The Secret, I've read The Power, 21 Irrefutable. I've read a lot of things and listened to a plenty of audio. So to see a film where I'm like, whoa, a lot of that kind of thinking that I've been taught is being portrayed in a very physical format now. <laughs> like one thing that is like straight out of something like The Secret is to, the Ancient One says at one point, is that thoughts become reality. I, I believe that's what she, that's what she says. I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what she says. <laughs> a lot of the teachings and the training start with the power of belief. The power of believing in the power of belief, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Visualization is something that's so important too. The power of mental training, the power of focus, the power of visualization. So am I someone who like practices magic and stuff? No, I don't, I don't do that. But what's, what's still really cool is that a lot of this comes back to a lot of things that I feel like, especially in Western culture lately in the past few years, ever since, I think especially ever since The Secret came out, how there's so much emphasis on things such as law of attraction and energy and how your thoughts are energy and how energy is a very physical thing in this world. Just because we can't see it directly doesn't mean it's not very physical and very powerful and the most effective thing in the world. And I love seeing this film go so literal with all that. It's like a big metaphor for a lot of this kind of, you know, philosophy and attitudes towards life. And I gotta say too, Rachel McAdams, man, like she plays like the love interest kind of character, but in a lot of these comic book films and like any kind of film like this, the love interest character tends to be someone who's kind of dull, especially when they're not a superhero themselves. Having her in this film, not only did Rachel McAdams make it better, the writing of her character was well done where I was, I, I loved her. I like loved this woman. I felt like she's perfect for Doctor Strange. Even though like, yeah, they have their things that are gonna make them fight and bicker, but you can really feel a strong connection between them. And she kind of reminds me of how they use Claire Temple in the MCU shows. I mean, if you watch the movie, you'll see how she kind of develops an image that's sort of similar to, to the likes of Claire Temple. It's cool having like that kind of human character in such a big film too. Like there were several moments where she would like a lot of her delivery, a lot of her reactions to things were really making the audience laugh. And you see that she is someone who's very vital and important to Doctor Strange's life. Rachel McAdams, if you're watching this, I love you.
To prove to you how much I love you, I'm going to reenact my favorite scene from The Notebook. C.E.? That's what I call him. The guy from 12 Years a Slave. Because I don't know how to say Chwatalavrshwa. <laughs> he's really cool in the role. He's, he's like the side mentor to Doctor Strange, a person who becomes like a partner to him in the movie. And I really like seeing him in this. Last time I saw him like rocking a sword and shit was Serenity. So it's really cool to see him like in this other big kind of fantasy kind of film. I really think like ever since Serenity, he's greatly evolved as an actor. <laughs> and this character in there who guards the library of all the crazy books uh, named Wong. He's a big highlight of the film for me too. Maz Mikkelsen is the villain. I've noticed like even just looking at Rotten Tomatoes consensus and stuff that there is kind of like people are pretty much saying that he is kind of falling into the category of the other MCU villains not being so great. And really, the only issue that was with the character that I think of why he's not receiving that title as a great MCU villain is because of the lack of time you spend with him. Because in the scenes he has, he's great. He's intimidating, he is threatening, and Mads Mikkelsen, he pulls it off very well, and he's, really, he's cool to watch, and he has some cool, he has like some really cool moments with the visuals and stuff. You don't really spend that much time with the guy. Because like in the prologue of the film, it's, it's primarily his screen time, but when you get to like the later on in the film, it's usually like he's around when the good guys are in the room too, so he's just playing bad guy role at the time. I feel like this film probably had in its original script that you do get to spend more time really understanding his point of view and why he's doing what he's doing, because even though he doesn't have that much screen time, I still felt that like, you know what? I actually get where this villain's coming from. <laughs> so yeah, I absolutely adored how crazy this film got visually. The film goes way above and beyond with committing to its weirdness of, you know, energy and space and time. Like, it gets fucking trippy and I love how much they committed to it. They have some crazy fight sequences where, like there was one fight that kind of made me think of the Frighteners, that, that Peter Jackson, Michael J. Fox film. So yeah, while it takes inspiration from like set pieces and action sequences or visual style from things like The Matrix and Inception, it still creates a lot of its own things. Like 90%, I get why they wouldn't show in the trailers and I feel like people might be like, what the fuck is this film? It works so well in the movie, but I could see how in a trailer it might turn off like, the general audience, the masses would be like, I don't know what the hell this is. I feel like the reviews that you're, if you haven't seen the film, I feel like the reviews can be a little bit confusing because a lot of the reviews make it, make you kind of think like, oh, a lot of cool visuals, but the story seems like a typical Marvel beat sheet. And yes, it does follow a typical Marvel beat sheet of an origin tale in a Marvel film. But one of the great things about it is that the, the crazy style is all a big representation of the bigger themes of its story. Because some reviews might make you feel like the film has style and then there's substance. But the cool thing about this film is that a lot of its style is the film's substance. And it's not like you're just watching cool CGI. When that shit is happening, it is affecting you emotionally too. It's more than just, whoa, that's cool to look at. It's adventurous, it's fun, it's breathtaking, it's a wild ride, the film's a fucking journey. <music> Benedict Cumberbatch kills it as Doctor Strange. I am so excited he's in the MCU. I can't wait to see how this film affects the future of the MCU. I thought it was a great, great, great time, and I really hope that if you haven't seen it, that you fucking go watch it. And if you have seen it, just comment and tell me what the weirdest moment of the film was for you. So while editing this video at uh, 3.42 in the morning, I realized I forgot to include my rating system, my awesome new rating system, because viewers on YouTube don't understand reviews unless there's a rating system in there. How can you tell how I feel about the film? It's fantastic or amazing. I guess in that category I would include magical. All right, Rejects, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and get accepted. And to quote one of my favorite YouTubers, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. Oh, shit.